welcome to Working Dad Trader. For the people that don't know me, I'm a working dad, working full time, um, saving into the stock market and building my future wealth. Um, this series follows my journey and hopefully you can get inspired and learn something from it as well. In this episode, we're going to look at my trading 212 portfolio for the month of June. It's been a really positive month. There's been some good gains in the month and there's been a bit of changes in my portfolio so I should go through with that now. Remember, please subscribe. Um, everyone that has subscribed already, thank you so much. It really does help. And let's have a dive into my portfolio and see what's going been going on. Okay, so this is my trading 212 portfolio on the 30th of June. Um, so at the moment I currently stand at just under 14% uh, return in profit, which is pretty good. If we look at roughly where I was a month ago, at the start of the month, um, I was just on about 9% at the start of the month, so it has grown quite nicely up to just under 14%. Um, so it's been a good month. Um, it's grown, like I say, about 4 or 5% this month, so that's promising. Um, we're sort of roughly now halfway through the year, um, so it was a pretty choppy start to the year. Um, and now, at the moment, things are looking a bit more positive, so we shall see. So that's, if we look down at my portfolio, what stocks I currently hold. Um, things that have left my portfolio this month have been I've sold Stone Co., uh, Beckton Dickinson, um, Beyond Meat, and Apple. Um, I took profits on all of them. Um, I suppose the ones that might stand out to people are one is Beyond Meat. Um, that's a start that's done fairly well for me, but it's been a bit up and down. Um, and I just decided it was time to sell that stock and to look for some, use that money and take the profit and look for another growth stock to put it into to hopefully get some more gains for me for the second half of the year. Um, Apple which I've got nothing against Apple. Again, I took a profit on Apple, and Apple's a fantastic company. Um, but in my actual ISA, where I've got ETFs, especially on American stocks, um, it's sort of covered in there, so I didn't. I was quite happy to sell on Apple, because I didn't really want to have it several times in my different portfolios. So there are the four that have gone. Um, as far as other stocks, um, Alibaba at last has been beginning to move in a more positive direction. Over the last month, it's um, starting to recover, which is good, um, as it holds quite a big portion in my portfolio. Um, Again, with Alibaba, I think I've said all the way through that it's a definite slow burner and I cannot see that recovering to the levels it was and getting over the the whole Chinese crackdown and the fine to the end of the year. So I'm hoping to see by sort of the end of this year that Alibaba returns to near its levels before it obviously went down. And to start to see my own stock sort of uh, roughly breaking even, I can see that happening. Um, there is obviously American Express I've had for, since the start, and that's going fantastically well. I bought that back in, when we had the crash back in uh, when everything happened. So I've had that from the start, and obviously that's doing probably my best stock, really. That's doing really great. Um, 
what's the new ones I've bought and it's recently one would be uh, Front Frontier Developments which is a company that helps which designs and makes uh, computer games um, the computer video game industry is massive and is probably now becoming the biggest entertainment sector there is out there um, so it's a really massive market and it's not going to go away anytime soon everyone in younger age groups love playing video games and it's, it's a big market um, it's a very speculative uh, purchase um, I've bought it recent, quite low it's a company that I'm hoping will rebound um, it hasn't at the moment it's gone down further um, and it's not something I would recommend um, but I've looked at the company and I've been on a few different uh, other sort of video um, chats and done research and listened to other people talking about the company and there is a lot of promise within the company and they've got some partnership with a new game coming out with um, the the Warhammer game um, so that looks promising they have had problems with one of their other games recently and I think that's part of the fall there where there was a few faults and they've had to send a few fixes um, but I, I just believe that it's undervalued um, again it could be wrong on that and it could plummet but I'm it's a very small position that I've taken up um, in this company um, literally is like one percent of my total portfolio if not not even one percent so the risk is extremely low um, and that's why I'm happy to take the risk on a company that could do recover and do well so that's why I've gone on that one um, my other ones I've been buying recently because of the talk of um, rising inflation possibly going into the second half of the year and beyond um, I've bought some small positions in commodities just to give myself a bit of insurance over if this sort of does happen then just commodities will become better in value so I've just tried to buy some insurance which I've bought one share of physical gold on the iShares um, and I also bought um, which is at the bottom wisdom tree physical silver just one share again not massive positions just small positions just to give myself a bit more diverse diversity in my portfolio and to just cover those options that if things do get a bit tricky with inflation going up or gets out of control then I've just got that bit of insurance with some commodities with silver and gold um, so yeah that's why I basically both gold and silver are quite low and have been quite low for a while um, so there's a lot of potential for them both to go up so that's why I just got them in there just to give me just that bit of insurance cover if inflation does hit and it hits quite hard um, because I just like to keep my portfolio diversified as I can. Um, yes, I'm prepared to take a few speculative and quite risky trades to try and generate some really big returns. Um, but I like to have a good base of stocks where I know they're always going to go up, good strong companies um, as, the, as the core and then some safe stocks in there as well. And, and just stocks to cover all 
cover all angles really. Um, that's why I've also got uh, stocks like obviously Facebook is a um, safe stock, Costco, people like that who are safe stocks. Coca Cola is a very safe stock, um, goes along nicely. And then I've also got a bit of diversity with I got my iShares India, um, which I also have obviously an ETF, whatever a tracker fund in my own ISA, which is India, which is doing very well. And I've also got this iShares India just to cover that market as well. Because just because inflation might be really high in the UK or the US, it might not be so bad in India or other parts of the world. So different countries fare differently under different circumstances. So I'm just trying to cover all my bases. So obviously I've got in this I've got quite a lot of companies from China, as I've got Tencent, um, JD, Dot Com, which is another Chinese company, and Alibaba. Um, so that's got quite a big proportion of my portfolio. I've got a lot of American stocks um, to cover those bases, and I've also got my now uh, iShares India fund also, just to cover as many bases as I can, plus have some commodities in there. It's just it's my way of trading, is just to be sensible and to do things to keep the risk to a minimum and just have, once I've got a very solid portfolio and a quite a defensive portfolio to keep myself safe, then I don't mind having the odd uh, speculative stock in there because the risk then is low and if it drops and becomes a disaster then I can easily sell out at a loss and it's only going to be a small loss because I've not I've not put too much into it. Um, so as we go through my portfolio there's generally no change from last month other than I've four have left my portfolio and four more others have come in. Um, again my UK stocks are still not great. The UK market is a bit choppy at the moment. Um, so we'll see on that one. Paypoint is still in the red. It's still not gone anywhere from the time I bought it. To be honest, it's just gone sideways. One day it's in the red, next day it's slightly in the profit. So that really is going to be a long term hold to maybe gain anything out of that um, the only other new one I've brought in is Tilray just because I wanted some exposure to the cannabis stocks again um, and Tilray is a massive cannabis company um, there has also been talk of uh, possible the reddit gang of possible trying a short squeeze so if that happens and that would be a great for me because then that would push that stock up um, again I don't particularly plan on holding Tilray long term again it's a short to medium play stock I've got a target in mind and if it gets there then I'm selling out so yeah it's just going to be here for maybe six months and then I look to move that on so that's where we are of that um. so there we are for people that made it to the end of this video thank you very much you are a legend it really does help and it means a lot to me that you've got this far um, for that I'm going to give a bonus of two stocks that are on my current watch list at the moment that I'm just looking at and doing a bit more research into one is called various eateries and it's ticker symbol V-A-R-E. Um, the other one is Sirius XM Holding, ticker, ticker single symbol S-I-R-I. -I. Um, there are two stocks that I'm looking into for a bit of future growth. Um, not long-term holdings, but definitely short to medium-term holdings. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking into, and I'm going to be looking into them over the next month. Whether, whether they make it into my trading 2-1 portfolio, who knows, but that's what I'm looking into. Okay, thank you very much for your support, and I see you soon.
Take care.